Hey everyone, welcome back to She Barb's Podcast. I am your host, Brooke Wright. Hey everyone, welcome back to She Barb's Podcast. Today's guest is Sammy Trinidad. Hi, Sammy. Hey, Brooke. <laughs> welcome back to my podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having <laughs> me again. So, can you tell our listeners what inspired you to write your most uh, recent book? So my most recent book is, I've been, I, uh, I'm pretty known for the historical Filipino fantasy I was writing for a while, but this one is pure mythology. So it's the origin story. So I took a lot of the main characters that I was writing before and I decided, you know what, I want our readers to know where she came from and her entire world and where she actually comes from. So it is a myth origin story. It's pretty cool. Nice, nice. Yeah. So as far as what inspired it, it's just because I was actually watching Marvel. <laughs> so oh. I was watching phase one of Marvel and I thought, you know, something I like that they did is that they took these characters and they let you really get to know them in each, mo- like in their own movie. And so oh. I thought, I want to give my characters their own books. Why not? <laughs> nice. So how did you develop your characters? So within the books like you have different books for different characters like you know what i'm saying like this makes sense <laughs> yeah so this is kind of it's just we're opening up the world now right or we're really what we're really doing is actually instead of opening up the world we're kind of zooming in on the characters and we're giving them each of their own how did they get where they are because that's kind of where i started this story is I've been writing the other one that's three point of view for a long time, like two years now, right? So I know each of these characters very intensely and I knew what their backgrounds were, but I just thought it would be really, really fun to see, okay, well, we know we know who they are, but I would love to get an entire book with just this character highlighted. So that's where I, I spent the last month and a half outlining all three of their books and they're fun. I'm excited. Wow. So, so when did the when did the first book come out? Or when does it come out? Yeah. So the first one will probably debut, I want to say early next. I want to say early next spring. I'm hoping actually I want to try to do a earlier, possibly in February or March, but it is up in the air. But I am shooting for early to late spring. So. Nice. It kind of reminds me of the movie Freaks. I don't know if you watched that. Have you watched no. it? What is that? It's on Netflix, and this girl, she's, like, trapped in a house with her dad, and she doesn't know she has superpowers. Like, she doesn't know that she has... Ah, I love those. Yeah. Yeah, she does not know at all. And so Mm -hmm. he won't let her leave the house. So she eventually leaves the house, and she can control people, like, control their minds, like... (laughs) Okay. Yeah, and it's a good movie. It's really... You gotta check that out. It's called Freaks. (laughs) Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> so that, which? Uh, oh, oh good. Oh, what was you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say for me, especially this one that I'm working on right now. She <laughs> is a Filipina spirit, and so the problem I was running into, especially with sometimes a Western audience, right, is that they don't always know the terminology the same way that we know, you know, Cinderella or <laughs> uh, fairies. Like if I say fairy, we have a very specific typically like a pixie like oh. image in our heads right mm-hmm. and the way that i have built her world is very not like that she's almost a cross between like an amazon and mm-hmm. and a fairy right like so she's not so i wanted to kind of explain her whole world and so it's been really fun to just kind of explore her different powers and what she can do and I don't know if you've ever had those moments though, where your characters, like you have it all outlined, you're starting to write, and then all of a sudden you're like, you start writing and the characters are like, actually, I, I have this issue that I'm dealing with. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I guess, I guess we're starting there. (laughs) So good thing we outlined an entire outline about around this. (laughs) <laughs> that's cool oh uh, what does your husband think of your of your newest books and like your characters and stuff does he read yeah. it anymore <laughs> he does so I I guess it's common I've I've heard a bunch of different kinds of relationships with people right some people like their partners just don't read their things at all which is fine right like some people that's just 
how their relationship works. I have one friend, she mm -hmm. doesn't let her husband read it. Like, it's not even that he doesn't want to, she just doesn't like him to. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, I'm like, wow, okay. I mean, that's, if that's your jam, cool. But he definitely does read it. He gets to hear most of my like 3 a.m. thoughts where I'm like, I roll over, I'm like, hey, hey, what if I do this? Like, would that <laughs> fix, <laughs> you know, this might be brilliant. And he's like, okay, show me the, <laughs> But it is kind of cool. He gets to read a lot of the raw thoughts that I have, and he gets to kind of be there for the storyboarding part of it. And then he also gets to see it in each phase because I, that's what I do. I just send him snippets like throughout the day, and he's <laughs> he's he's great. He's like number my number one fan. So that's cool. Love that's it. cool that he gives you input too. Like yeah, yeah. You... well he's a he's a videographer. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, I don't know if you do videographers as well or only authors, but. <laughs> He does do cinematography, so he has a lot of input in the story building part of it. Ooh, nice. Maybe you two can collaborate, like, on a book and, like, come together and write yeah, a book. Yeah, we've actually talked about that. I <laughs> I told him, I'm like, maybe you should just make these into miniseries. I mean, I would not be opposed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would, that would be cool. <laughs> I think it'd be really cool. So we've talked about that. It's nice that our dreams kind of line up together. Yeah, that is. That, so, um, which characters would you say you related to the most? Mm. So what I found as I was actually outlining these is that I actually, I feel like I channeled different parts of me into the different characters. I would say if I were to probably have to pin it down to one character, it would probably be the, the main one in this one. So her name's Maria. Um, Maria is very... So her background, right? So she's part of this this uh, this world where magic light is a thing. Like everything has magic light. Mm -hmm. Their entire realm was created as a way for their their spirits to basically be able to bond with the magic light. And she was born for whatever reason without being able to bond with the light. And so she she already feels very different than everyone else. And she like to top it all off, she's the daughter of the person who created the realm. So she feels kind of like, she's just very, there's a lot of pressure on her. She already feels pretty different. She's still kind of like, she goes through the training hoping like she will eventually find these powers, but she kind of feels really broken. And she doesn't, she doesn't, in her brain, like she's not wired, like literally the same way as everybody else is. And so she, and she, she views her relationship with like, animals or other people as very different so I think she her <laughs> kind of sounds uh, but like her her angst I guess like her little her I'm so misunderstood like I I felt like that a lot growing <laughs> up I was very isolated I always felt like I was a different thinker and I always had a unique way of thinking about things but as a kid I was I felt really really I, I just didn't feel like I related a lot to the people around me and and within my own cultures. Like I definitely, I what I love about Maria, she's not anti her culture. She loves, she actually really, really loves her father. She loves the people around her and she loves the culture of everything. But that's her thing is she feels very much like I can appreciate my culture and want to do it a different way. <laughs> like I don't feel like it has to be <laughs> different and so I love her she's really kind she's really compassionate um but I do really really <laughs> relate to that kind of feeling of how do you react when your world tells you you're broken right especially if it's an identity thing and so that was fun to play around with I would say my other characters that I relate to so my other two main characters and that are the other books are going to feature they are um one of them is a an assassin, which is kind of fun. He's the most apathetic, bitter character I've ever written. <laughs> and I adore him because he his background is he's really traumatized and but he will do literally anything to save his mom. So for him, like I love characters like that. I love characters who have very, very, you know, gray morals but they do it for a really good reason. So then you get to play with these moral themes. And he's one of my, he's also just really snarky. And so I, I like characters like that. So I think for him, I channeled the whole 
feeling like just I, I have some trauma as well in my background and so I kind of got to through him explore it through different eyes the way I was telling Brian about it was he's the character that I get to write that he does everything he's what I would have been if I had gone really bitter like if I had done all the wrong things or signed a contract for like signing my life away for a good cause like this is the kind of character I probably would be <laughs> and so it's kind of fun to just do like this alternate ego kind of thing um and I'm I'm a big believer in like redemption arcs and so I we'll see though I don't know we'll see where his story ends <laughs> because he's uh he's got quite the trauma and and then the other one his name is Nimuel and his background is he he gets to represent kind of the revolution of everything going on with the Philippine Revolution and he was born half so he was half Spanish half Filipino oh. and so for him I feel like I relate a lot to him because his character from the get-go is the only one he's the opposite of Maria actually so he was the only one born with magic powers in a human world versus not being born with powers in a in the other world so he he has a lot of expectation from his tribe to like fulfill lots of roles. And I feel like I can relate to that. Um, I definitely feel like the older I get, the more I realize that I placed a lot of unrealistic ex expectations on myself growing up. And so I feel like he, the way that he's shaping out to be, he just feels like so much pressure to have to perform all the time. And so it's kind of fun to play with his arc of, relax like you're fine you don't have to do all these things like it doesn't all come down to you all the time mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i really that's really enjoy his arc a lot <laughs> so that's true i feel like a lot of authors yeah. like based a lot of their characters on themselves like little parts of themselves mm -hmm. they have put in their yeah. characters so yeah that's pretty cool and i feel yeah. like listening to like the way you describe your characters and the way you describe your books, like I feel like it could be graphic novels. I don't know why I see graphic novels in my head. I've actually, actually heard that. There's a lot of people who tell me like maybe these should be comics or maybe these should be uh, what's that word? Not comics, but um, <laughs> like maybe I should be a screenwriter. And I'm like, you yeah. know, I wouldn't be opposed. Like that's one of my dreams is to have my books be made into novels or right? be made into like a miniseries. Like that. That would be my dream, <laughs> but, yeah, I, but I guess I, I just never tried screenwriting, so I'm not sure how to tell a story only in dialogue yet. Um, I've always just done prose, and so I'm like, well, I'd have to study it, but yeah. I feel like it could be, it probably could be. I don't yeah. know. I've been watching a lot of Naruto lately, and so <laughs> I think it's leaking into my stories because I have a lot more action sequences all of a sudden, and so, and in my head, I'm think I'm like, thinking of the characters being like, oh, this character, oh, that man over there, I see him, he has emotion. what am I doing? I'm like, okay, I need to actually get back into the, my character's head, not an anime. <laughs> so. Somebody commented on here, I'm gonna post it oh, on the hello. thing. Let me know if you see it, can you see it? I think uh, so. You <laughs> What does it say? It says I can definitely see that concept being made oh, into. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, I see, and that's the thing too. Is I was telling, uh, I was telling my partner too as well. Sometimes when I write these scenes, I can actually see them as, uh, like I see them as movie scenes in my head, and I'm just sort of the person who's like describing the movie scene as it goes along. Right. So, for sure, like. If that can be done, why not? Like I am not opposed to being whatever. I'm I was talking to a friend about this the other day, about how sometimes authors especially have a tendency to brand themselves as only authors, which is fine, right? Like you're a writer, like of course. But we were talking about how that's a little bit limiting when in reality you might be good at a lot of different fields of creating. Like mm -hmm. storytelling is storytelling and whatever field you choose to go into. And it's been something I'm thinking about a lot. Like, huh, I guess I don't, I don't have to, I've always, in my brain, I've always just been Sammy the author for a long time. <laughs> but now I'm like, well, I don't, maybe. Like, why, <laughs> why would I want to only be that? I don't know. It's just, it's just always been <laughs> who I am. So Bam. I thought that was an interesting perspective for sure. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, definitely. Because I see, because Netflix, they're like looking for new stories anyway, like new series anyway. So I feel like pitching some of your stories, like if you ever write, yeah, yeah, then definitely check them out because they're putting a lot of new stuff on there. And I'm like, that's a good show. (laughs) I mean, you're getting me all excited now. That's something that I would just fangirl over. (laughs) <laughs> like, you know, over my own stuff but I think that would be I don't know if you ever heard of the show Good Omens but Neil Gaiman was on the set of that quite a bit and he's the author of those books of Good Omens and I just think about trying to like being in the room where it happens ah, Hamilton reference anyway but being in the room where they're creating the things that I came up with I think I would just be like I think I would just <laughs> die on the spot <laughs> so. so um what do you like to do when you're not writing um so I do do MMA still I also have been doing a lot of hiking um a lot, I do a lot of music so music is a big thing in terms of sport I do MMA as well but I also do a lot of Lately, I've actually been really into, um, I do watch a lot of shows, but I've been into coloring books. Like, it's not (laughs) even that I draw, I just like to color. Like, (laughs) just, I don't know, there's something about it that is really cathartic. Like, it helps, it lets my my hands move without my brain needing to to think (laughs) a lot. (laughs) And so it kind of, I feel like it frees up. I don't know, there's something about it that's just really cathartic for me right now. Like, I really love... I don't know. <laughs> like, like I said, I can't draw to save my life. Like maybe I should take a class, but I can't freehand draw at all. But I can color. <laughs> I can I can take a color pencil and fill in lines. <laughs> can you trace? Like put a blank piece of paper on there and trace it. <laughs> yeah, no, I can do that. And I I've taken water painting classes before and they're not bad, but I don't have the same visual like I can't just like look at something and be like, yeah, here's how I would draw it. Like it takes me a long time to like sketch out things if I was going to do it. But Mm -hmm. I totally admire the people who can do that and do like digital art too. I think that's a skill. (laughs) I wish I had this, but. Um, Can you see these comments on her? I think um, someone's comment. You can't see them, can you? I am I don't think I can. I don't think I can. That's. But that one is one of them. Oh, wait. No, I do see them now. Sorry, I had it on private chat. I just clicked on comments. Okay. Okay. So you can see all of them. Proud of you. Oh, (laughs) quoting Hamilton. (laughs) Yeah. I want to thank thank you so much, Sammy, for coming on the podcast today and chatting with me. Of course. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to to be on here with you. It's so fun. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you have a great day. Hey, you too. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. I want to thank you all so much for listening to my interview with Sammy. If you would like to go on her website, I have linked it on my website and on this interview. So if you all want to check it out, please feel free to do so. And I hope you all have a great day and make great choices. Bye.